luckiest thing in my career. Another wonderful director was offered the show. He had worked with Mary before. He was offered the show, and, and I'm not sure of the reason, but they couldn't come to some financial terms, whatever the problem was. And I had worked on the pilot of the Dick Van Dyke show. I had worked as an assistant director on a film Mary was on called X-15. And they had granted Mary had seen he and she and both had liked it. So to the best of my knowledge, after this other director turned the show down, they came to me. I don't know. They may not have. They came to me seventh or eighth, but it didn't much matter. Um, and at that point in my career, I, you know, I had done He and She and, and a few other shows, but I really wasn't doing anything great, anything I was proud of. And um, Grant called me up and said, we'd like to meet with you. And, and Mary and I reminisced about the pilot and everything. And they gave me a script or an outline. Maybe they just gave me an outline. I don't think the script had been written yet. And I read it, and I didn't know Jim and Alan, Jim Brooks and Alan Burns at that point. And I said, whoa, this is really going to be good. So, yeah, I'd love to do that. But I said, <clears throat> for your sake and my sake, I don't want to do all of them. Let's do, I'll do the first couple, and then you bring in another couple of directors. And I never did more than two-thirds of the show. I always did, out of 24 shows, I always did like 16 because I like to go out and do other shows, and I wanted, I also felt it would be good to get another point of view. But I think I did the first three shows, then Al Rafkin came in and did, wrote his mother show, and I think another director came in, then I came back. And all I remember was what a thrill it was to come back. And I told Grant, I, 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 at the best of my knowledge, I said, let's try these first three shows and see how it works out. But the second, you know, I had a chance and said to Grant, no, I'd really love to come back. Well, initially, the concept was she was a divorced woman. And they, Jim and Alan, Grant took, took it back to CBS in New York. Mike, Mike Dan, who was head of program, said, absolutely not. You cannot have a divorced woman. You know, it was a, a, a single divorced woman going on her own having to make a living. And so what they did, which is so silly, She'd been living with this guy for four years, putting him through college. And then when he graduated, it was, well, let's get married. And he said, yeah, let's talk about it. So that's when she left and moved to Minneapolis. So it was OK to be living with somebody, but it wasn't OK to be divorced in those days. And um, I was around for casting, because what had happened was Mary had done a, a live variety show with Dick Van Dyke. Dick had, I guess, a series of variety shows. And it gotten such high ratings that the audience said, well, gee, maybe Mary Todd Moore had something to do with it. So they gave her and Grant uh, a pickup for 13 shows. No premise, just do a show with Mary. And Grant, who I'm sure Grant has told you this story, but <clears throat> he was working at 20th Century Fox then. And, he, and Jim Brooks was doing Room 222, and Alan had come in when Jim was gone to work on some of the scripts, and Grant put the two of them together. He just felt they'd be a good team. They'd never worked together. And he felt with their sensibilities, they'd be a good team. And so he, um, he hired Jim and Alan to write, come up with the idea. So I wasn't there for the very beginning, but I was there back and forth, because I was also doing at the time Bill Cosby's first show where he was a school teacher in high school. And so I'd be there for most of the casting. I was there for Valerie's casting, and I was there for uh, Gavin's casting and Cloris's. I wasn't there for Ed's or Ted Knight. It was right at the beginning of the women's movement of how women were starting to go out in the workplace and starting to try to be independent. But that was never the concept of the show. It was supposed to be a show about a newsroom and Mary and the single woman and being on her own and working in a man's world. What happened is as the women's movement got stronger and stronger, Valerie Harper, who was really attuned to it, 
would say to Mary, you can't say those lines, you can't do that. She's not just a secretary, blah, blah, blah. And Mary would say to the guys, I can't say these lines uh, because of so-and-so, you know. And gradually the show evolved. And the Jim and Alan, I don't think, were particularly attuned to the women's movement, although there were women writers on the staff. I don't mean they were not adverse to it. They just, like most guys, just weren't aware of what was going on. And so it was Valerie who sort of started this whole thing about more and more being a single working woman who is not just on her own, but has a point of view about things. It's very interesting. It never started out to be something that it turned into. And it hit at just the right time and a perfect time for that show.